I could really use a change of scenery. Yeah. Everybody's smoking all the greenery. Yeah. Close the match cause they were handed down to me. But I'm still fly. I'm still fly. I know. What's up, everybody? It's your boy Onyx here, Going Full Nerd. So welcome back to another look into phase four of the Marvel Cinematic Universe and my Theories Change series. Now, we're two episodes into the Falcon and the Winter Soldier. And what I could tell you is that we're getting a lot more than we bargained for in action and story. You know, most casual MCU fans, they want the action. Most of us dedicated really into it fans, we want the story. But one thing we both have is the predictions on what's going to happen next. So let's see what has come true or hasn't come true since I last talked to y'all on the podcast. Now, Here's the thing. We're getting a deeper look into the Marvel Cinematic Universe with the stories they're putting on Disney+. Plus. And I'll be honest, I like how they're fleshing out the history of the world around these characters in the background. Sure, many comic book nerds like myself, we know the framework that these stories are built upon. We know kind of what's going to happen. We're almost you know, like psychics, but we're not quite there because these writers make different little changes to fit the broader audience and draw more people in. So let's talk about the theories that I put out last week and let's try to talk about what went down in this week's episode. I will let you know. If you have not watched this week's episode of The Falcon and the Winter Soldier, spoilers are coming. So if you have not watched it, I'm going to tell you, hit pause, then come back to this video, come back to the audio podcast after you have done so. So I'm going to give you a quick minute to pause it, and then we'll get into my little bit of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Okay, everybody, that was it. So check this out. Let me remind you, I'm pretty good at this. My, me and my theories, we, we're not 100%, but I'm going to say we about 80, 86, 87% correct, especially with everything that went down in WandaVision. Y'all ain't believe me, but it came out. So let me get into Falcon and the Winter Soldier. I have a partially correct theory so far that I mentioned in last week's episode. Now, if you don't remember, last week's episode, I said superpowers in the Marvel Cinematic Universe just don't pop up like candy. So there has to be an explanation. Um, we found that explanation out in this week's episode about the power broker. You know, we got the Flag Smashers. We know they're physically enhanced. But they made mention of who? The power broker. He was coming after them. Now, here's the thing about the power broker. Inside the Marvel Universe, meaning the comic book, it can be tied to Dr. Carl Malice. He's like a mad scientist doctor that was in charge of giving people superpowers. Now, I'm not going to get deep into the comic books. The comic books, they had this thing like unlimited class wrestling. They had all that. You know, it, it was kind of corny, but it was the 80s. It was, you know, the 80s, the 90s, early 90s. I mean, well, it was more 80s. Hey, it is what it is. You know, that's. <laughs> That's what we liked back then as kids. Now, here's the deal. This could really seal the fate of the Netflix connection if they don't mention Carl Malice, okay? When we get the explanation about the power broker. Now, I said in last week's episode, Carl Malice was a character in season two of Jessica Jones. If you haven't seen that, you may want to check it out. Find a place that you can see it because he was responsible for giving Jessica Jones and her mom some sort of superpower or basically helping them out until they got their superpower, but performing, you know, experiments. And he's also responsible for that version of Patsy Walker, a.k.a. Hellcat. They when the series got canceled, they alluded for her to have some power. So I kind of, you know, put that out there because he was trying to give her some superpowers. It is what it is. All right. So now here's the thing. This is possibly going to lead to the introduction of a character known as Curtis Jackson, not the rapper 50 Cent, but the fictional CEO of the corporation, which was behind the power broker in the comic books. Now, I can see this 
possibly happening with how the movie properties to seem at they seem to have a distaste for connecting to the television properties and they may do this to distance themselves again while still not completely denying the connection to the television properties. You know what I'm saying? But here's the deal. What I can see is there is going to be a Hydra and shield connection with the backstory of the super soldier powers that the flag smashers and these characters got their powers from the power broker. I see there's going to be that connection. Why? Number one, they introduced Isaiah Bradley. Now here's the thing. If you have not picked up a comic book called red, white, and black, this is the true story of the black Captain America, Isaiah Bradley. Basically, it follows along the lines of the true story of the Tuskegee experiments, and they were talking more so about the guinea pigs that they used to test the super soldier serum on before they got to Captain America. They made some changes to this story. Inside of the Falcon and the Winter Soldier, he was someone that after Captain America, while they were trying to recreate this super soldier formula, they put it inside Isaiah Bradley. And honestly, he was pissed. Okay, I mean, I, I can see this. They had the angriest black man. He was living in like the angriest black area of Baltimore, it felt like. But here's the deal, okay? The story behind him can be a series in itself. Just a little bit they put out there, okay, talking about how they dropped him behind the lines to take on the Winter Soldier. And the last time he saw Bucky, a.k.a. the Winter Soldier, when he was mind control, he ripped that bionic arm off him and sent him home to his masters. Yo, you got to give me that story. I mean, there's been moments where, you know, stuff I've been reading online, they've been talking about Spike Lee wants to get a Mar direct a Marvel Cinematic Universe story. Yo, this is the story for him, folks. Get him, Ryan Coogler, you know, Tanisi Coates, get them, get them three together and do this story. Oh, that would be hot. That would be fire. Come on, man. But, you know, but let me bring you a couple of attention to a couple of other things that I noticed while watching the episode. I know I don't get everything, but I'm going to throw a couple of more things. We get a few uh, instances showing the instability of this hand-selected Captain America that they have, a.k.a. John Walker. To us comic book fans, a.k.a. the U.S. agent is what he will become. Don't know if they're going to do that in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, but in the comic books, he's a superhero in his own right, though he's not the, you know, he is what he is. He is what he is. Now, here's the thing. The instability of John Walker and basically the problems, I, I got problems with his right-hand man, Battlestar. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to call him Battlestar. Okay, Hoskins, or whatever you want to call it. Sergeant Major Hoskins. You know, that's the way they portrayed him inside of the episode. These guys, think about it. They're arrogant. They're they're basically acting like assholes to Sam and Bucky, which really Sam and Bucky are acting like assholes back. But here's the thing: you got to look at them. And, and, and I try to take a different point with these characters. They are used to being in charge. I mean, you got what? A special forces ranger captain and his sergeant major. Okay. Get it? I get it. But here's the thing. They're used to being in charge. They're used to following orders. But one thing you got to remember, that is not what Captain America is all about. If you go back to Captain America and the first adventure, go back to that movie. And I want you to remember the line when Dr. Erskine was talking to Steve Rogers. He says, listen, this is why you were chosen, because a strong man who has known power all his life may lose respect for that power. But a weak man knows the value of strength and knows compassion. Here goes my problem. I don't think John Walker and 
Battlestar, because I refuse to call this guy Captain America, I don't think they have compassion. And that's one of the reasons why Steve selected, you know, Sam to carry the shield. Why? Because he has compassion. There's a reason why he did not give the shield to Bucky. And that was because Bucky still had his own demons to sort out. And compassion it, it, it's, it's real thin line between compassion and sympathy. And Bucky is still in the sympathy portion as evidenced by his PTSD. That's a recurring subject within the episode. Now, here's the deal. John Walker is heroic, but he doesn't know the value of that heroism. And compassion at this point is foreign to him. It is all, as he said in his own words, missions. Let me get on the mission. Don't worry about the mission. Worry about the compassion. That is something that that's why Captain America was the symbol he was. I'm putting it out there. That's the direction I think the writers and the stories are going to take. Quote me on it because it's going on video, it's going up on my YouTube channel, it's waiting for you to hit like, share, and subscribe just so you can find out what happens when I do the next review after this. So here's the deal. Let's go to the next theory. Let, let's, let's go to the next thing. Bucky's PTSD, okay? It's the forefront of his story in the MCU right now. and the treatment of people of color. I mean, that scene with Falcon and Bucky arguing in the street and the cops pull up guns in their hand before they recognized who Sam was. It's a reflection of today's society. You are judged before people know who the hell you are. That's it. You know, bottom line up front, this is something that has occurred over history. The more things change, the more they remain the same. So what do we get as we move forward in this story? I think we're going to get more. It's going to come to a head. And it was very, very, very straightforward in your face. And it's going to be in your face for the rest of the story, I believe. Now, here's my next and almost final theory for this episode right here. Here's the deal. Okay. With the intro is, is, and well, it's, it's actually a question is the reintroduction of Zemo and the introduction of the ability to give normal people super soldier abilities or superpowers such as this, is this a lead in to us getting a Marvel cinematic universe version of the Thunderbolt? I mean, there are other things pointing towards that, but what I do believe is I will see and we will see John Walker getting his enhanced strength and possibly a more tragic portion of his storyline from the comic books. Now, if you're not familiar with the comic books, he had a tragic part of his storyline where his parents were killed by enemies. Now, in this story, it would be, I believe, loved ones getting killed or injured by the enemies, either Power Broker or the Flag Smashers. Now, here goes my thing. Remember that girl from the beginning? You know, pound hand, mwah, kissing on the hand. She's somebody close to him. You know, just saying. You know, he's a military dude. Jody not going to get her. It might be the bad guy. Just saying. Now, when that happened in the comic books, when that massacre of his loved ones happened, it threw him off the deep end and he went like 100% batshit crazy. I, I mean, let's go. Threw him off the deep end. So here's the theory. My theory is they will, by the end of this series, have John Walker as the U.S. agent, not Captain America. But Immediately after this series, I have a feeling we will get the Falcon Cap or Cap Falk 
or Sam Wilson, Captain America, that we saw in the comic book by the series end. Now, here goes the reason why. There have been some toy leaks that I've seen online, and they've been showing the packaging. And instead of this cool Falcon costume, like my shirt, and if you're watching the YouTube videos, I think they're going to have the Falcon cap outfit that we saw in the comic books, you know, with the, you know, kind of almost looking like what Captain America wore in um, Winter Soldier, you know, the, his stealth outfit, but having the red, white, and blue, the shield and his wings and stuff. I, I don't know. I, I mean, could be, could be. Now, we also get the possibility of Bucky getting a more prominent role. And this is the kind of the maybe will happen with the government outside of his therapy sessions. I mean, all honesty, Bucky, the Winter Soldier, is too good a character to waste. Well, he, he could be a serious black ops guy for the government or for the Avengers. Now, I mean, it would be a waste of Bucky not becoming an Avenger. I mean, that's just me. I really think Bucky, a.k.a. the Winter Soldier, a.k.a. the White Wolf, a.k.a. James Buchanan Barnes, a.k.a. the Thorn and Sam Wilson side during the first two episodes of this series. I think it would be great for him to have a more prominent role with the Avengers. You know, it is what it is. He fought side by side with them during Endgame, Infinity War. It is what it is. OK, so as a recap, I'm going to go ahead and say it. episode two was a solid mix of drama and action. But the pace leaves a little bit for me to be desired. I mean, it was like one is like a, it's like almost a roller coaster. Oh, I'm hyped up. Then we drop down, hyped up. Then we drop down. Now, I understand about story creation, but don't take me through this roller coaster ride. Boom, boom, boom. You know, because it seems like it's up and down, up and down, up and down, up and down. But. We are getting some hints of how unstable John Walker really is, and we're getting a deeper look into the post blip. I hate saying blip, post snap, post return, whatever, but blip. I still blame Sony for that. Post blip Marvel Cinematic Universe and the transition from seeing Chris Evans and Robert Downey Jr. as our main faces of the MCU and transitioning to what should, could, and would be the new faces of the MCU going forward. All right, everybody, that's it pretty much. Sorry I didn't do this live, but hey, it's all good. Join me every Sunday, 6 p.m. for a live back and forth podcast recording with your boy Onyx here at Going Full Nerd. And, you know, join me every Wednesday live. Okay, for Nerd Talk with Onyx, where we talk some nerdy stuff and some just relevant stuff. So, as always, if you can't say anything about anybody nice, don't say it. Send it to me. I'll say it for you. Peace, y'all, and I'm out of here. Say it with your chest now. Say it with your chest now.